Hey everyone, today we are taking a look at World of Kings and Redstone Castle in Overlord mode. Now, uh, this is usually a pretty hard dungeon for me, but with some changes, it's actually much more doable. Uh, I'd like to thank Ultimate Boss Johnson, who streams on Twitch. He showed me a lot of suggestions as to how to go about doing this so that it is way easier. Um, I'll put his link below in the description. Definitely check him out when he is streaming. He's a great resource, very knowledgeable. All right, I'm going to skip through some of his mobs because it just takes forever to get through them all. But um, there's two different ways to tank the first boss. Now, if you're in a low level overlord or a group that's doing just fine uh, and you're not struggling at all, the best place to tank it is really in the center because then the boss isn't jumping around and you're not having to have melee run around too much so that um, you're losing DPS. So if you're, if you're okay with tanking it in the center and you're not having a lot of problems with people dying, definitely stick with the center. Okay, in this video I'm going to take the approach that you're struggling with this first boss or you're in a really high overlord and you really need the extra help. So what you're going to do is you're going to tank either at orange or purple, either one is fine, and have the ranged stand on the other side. They don't have to be exactly on there, but just a general idea. Um, so the thing is with this, okay, you've got some AoEs that you have to avoid, that's fine. Um, and then there's also a line AoE that he does towards the DPS at times. So just avoid those um, AoE attacks. Really the big problem here is when he kind of jumps towards the center, he's going to do a debuff on your group called Torture. And this is, it's a very short buff, but it only lasts about eight seconds, I think. But it will do a lot of damage to your DPS and you will have problems with dying with this if you are not quite ready or uh, struggling with this. So you can see here he jumped towards the center and then everybody has to run in, which is why tanking in the center if you're able to do it is definitely better because then you're not running back and forth all over the dungeon. However, by tanking out at the stairs uh, where those markers are, you are avoiding that torture debuff. Um, so I think that what happens is that when he lands in the center, if you're nearby it's you're going to get that and it's possibly could kill some of your party or at least make it really difficult for your healer okay so i'm going to fast forward through most of this fight because that's pretty much it you're you're just really going through and um, taking him in one location and then he jumps to the center you're avoiding some aoe's and you're DPSing him. It's not a terribly hard fight uh, unless you end up dying a lot to that uh, torture debuff, which I actually didn't know about. So um, boss informed me of it and uh, it made it really easy because we didn't even really take hardly any damage this fight. So it was very good. Um, okay, moving along to the second boss, I'm gonna skip over some of these mobs because it's just really clearing a lot of stuff to get to the second boss. Okay, skipping forward, clear um, all the mobs through to the uh, second boss. And what you're gonna do for the second boss is he drops these green puddles. So you want to make sure that the whole room is clear and either work your way um, counterclockwise or clockwise around the rug. Um, I prefer counterclockwise. That's usually what I do. So um, just work your way around the rug. Okay, so for this, I had the range and um, stand a little bit more close to the rug in the center. That way there's less puddles that are spawning around the DPS and the tank. The logic behind that is that when the puddles spawn, if the DPS um, and melee are all in close, you're having to have the DPS uh, run through a lot of per of these green puddles and take more damage. So if the range is kind of more in the center, they're out of the way a little bit more, and your melee, if they're kind of off to the side of the boss a little bit, then there's less, uh, yeah, a green puddle that they have to go through. So if you're not as familiar with this fight, there's only a few mechanics that most of you really need to worry about. 
Um, one are these kind of green circles around you. You just move away from everybody else. The other is really these uh, green puddles that cause a big problem a lot of times. And then this yellow circle thing here, you can see that you need to move back out of. So most of it's not too bad. It's really just a lot of placement and figuring out. Um, there, at one point here, you will see there's a message about a poison waltz. And uh, here you can see he's got it over his head now. And you want to stand behind him, not between him and the green puddles, because the green puddles are coming all towards him. So if you're standing in that line, you're going to end up getting a lot of damage. And so moving away from that is really uh, important to stand behind him. And afterwards, he usually throws one of the yellow circles. So just move out of the way for that. Okay, so a healer friend suggested that um, for healers, look out for a spell called Felbolt, and you can see him casting it there. And when he casts that, um, he, he throws like a green bolt towards one of the players, usually uh, a DPS of some sort, and they take a large uh, amount of damage over time. So you might want to focus on that person after he casts it so that you can... Um, heal them and not lose one of your DPS. Okay, that's it for boss two. It's really just a repeat of the same thing. You're just avoiding the puddles, avoiding the waltz and the green, the big yellow circle. So um, hopefully that helps. Some overlords you have to watch out for the spires, which you have to stand on very quickly um, afterwards for, and there's other mechanics that come about in the higher overlord dungeons f that make this way more challenging, but at least hopefully that gives you the basics of the mechanics for this dungeon, for this boss. Now, uh, moving along to boss number three. On the way to boss number three, there is a mob walking around the circle here. Try to avoid him. Um, he was in the way in the last run that I did, and so I pulled him because he was annoying and uh, it took forever to kill him. He has a lot of hit points, so just avoid that and clear all the mobs to the third boss. Okay, so this boss, um, please ignore the awful pull. This is what happens when I'm trying to type instructions to the group and leave on auto. Um, so the first suggestion is to start on the stage so that you have more room to work because the first purple puddle you can drop at the stage. Now, again, I am not placing the boss in the correct area here because I messed up. So, uh, and, and please forgive me with all the wall shots. Um, so the idea here is that if you have the boss like halfway in the wall, or at least in the wall, um, when you're tanking, that he will, um, that when those tornado things spawn, they will be kind of stuck in the wall and they won't go around. Um, so I did kind of a poor job of this and I apologize, but it gives you the idea. So um, what happens is as you go around, you watch for him to start casting. And when he starts casting, and you can see it up at the top here, you want to move back during that cast. Now, again, I didn't do a very good job of it there um, because I need to get used to looking at the casting and tanking. But so work your way around some of these uh, obstacles here and hopefully you can keep him kind of in the wall. Um, and if you do, the tornadoes just kind of stick in there. Now some of them are a little bit more stuck and some of them are a little less so. But by doing this, um, you're keeping that room area so much more open so that when you get to the end you have uh, a lot more room to work with if you need to. So if you're less familiar with this fight there's these four bone walls that kind of angled at each of the corners that block you from running around. Uh, the boss will jump at DPS and you have to interrupt him and uh, he drops purple puddles as you go around and he drops these purple tornadoes. Now um, if you don't have enough DPS, you end up running out of room for areas. So here I just pass the door in the background. And don't tank him right in front of the door. Uh, move past it because it can cause some problems with the uh, tornadoes sticking in the walls. So here you can see he's kind of like halfway in a wall. This is kind of a better example. Um, you're going to move back out of these 
uh, attacks that he does. And you're going to try, so you can see the tornado in the background. It's like stuck in the wall and not moving anywhere. So here you really, that was a good example of what to do as far as, you know, how it gets stuck in the wall. And I'll try to show you in the background, you can see the tornadoes are kind of off to the side and not really moving. Now, some of mine are not really positioned very well. That one went off to the side too far. But again, this is my first time trying this approach uh, and it was a little bit challenging, but it worked really well because the tornadoes are really, you know, some of them, I'd say about 50% of them got stuck in the wall and didn't move. And so that between that and having the purple puddles right along the wall, you can see the room is so open and there's no tornadoes moving past those walls, uh, except for this one here, which is gonna move around a little bit more because it's not in a wall. And I'm trying to utilize the center now to uh, avoid DPS, but you can see there's, it's, it's way different than at least my typical approach where uh, you just kind of stay around the outside, but you don't like put him in the wall. And this is because um, everything kind of sticks to the wall and therefore now you have this huge open space to finish your DPS and you don't have to worry about him um, being about halfway down in health by the time you get halfway around the room because now you have a, an, another large area to work in. So hopefully you found this helpful. Um, I found it extremely helpful and I really wanna try running this boss a whole lot so that I can get used to this approach. I hope this makes your life a little bit easier in this uh, little bit challenging dungeon. This is Beachy Oak Girl and we will see you next time in World of Kings.